Take a look at modifying the PID controller that we designed in the last lesson and get it working using the inertial measurement unit built into the Rev Expansion Hub to turn our robot to a desired angle. I'm going to assume that you're going to be using a four motor drivetrain. Um, this is the most common in FTC uh, for the reason that you get uh, a very a good ratio between torque and motor allowance. Um, so, yeah, uh, and since that's likely going to be the most common and probably what you're going to be using that's what we're going to focus with uh this tutorial will be applicable for an the overwhelming majority of drive train styles uh everything from a tank six wheel drive uh to a mechanum drive or x drive should work all the same for this um so let's do our back left and finally our back oops Okay, so those are four motors. Um, front left motor, front left, and then back left. Wait, actually, I can just copy and paste this. Um, perfect. Uh, so we're just going to get rid of that from the last lesson right now. Um, <clears throat> now we just need to go ahead and uh, set the direction of our motors correctly. Uh, this will change from drivetrain to drivetrain. But generally, um, generally speaking at least, uh, it'll be the left side of your drivetrain uh, that will need to be reversed. Oops, set direction. Perfect. Wonderful. Okay, so now our drivetrain is completely configured, set up, um, and we can go ahead and uh, start uh, doing things with our IMU. So uh, I have some code commented here. So first things first, we're going to initialize our IMU. Um, it is a type BNO055. Uh, the BNO055 is just the model number of the uh, particular uh, IMU or inertial measurement unit that is built into the Rev Expansion Hub. Um, so first things first, uh, we can then uh, initialize it using our hardware map, uh, set up a couple of the parameters, um, make sure that it's using the IMU mode. This makes sure that it's uh, c combining the magnetometer, accelerometer, and gyro and doing proper sensor fusion. And finally, we're going to work with radians for this episode. Um, and then go ahead and call init the initialize method with our parameters. Wonderful. First things first, we need to talk a little bit about angles. And so, um, so let's say that this red line right here is our target angle pointed at zero degrees. Uh, we're going to work with degrees for this example, even though our code is going to be in radians, just because it's a lot more intuitive. Okay, so let's say uh, we're at our target angle is zero degrees, and we're at like, I don't know, 45 degrees about. Um, so this is 45. So if you remember from last episode, our equation for error is equal to our reference minus our set point right here. So our reference in this example is zero. So zero minus 45. So right now our robot has an error of 45. And then what will happen is if we can, if we just use our PID controller on this is um, just assigning the uh, the left side of the robot the positive PID power and then the right side of the robot the negative of that this will converge on zero degrees let's try another example um, if this angle right here is 345 something like that um, and the robot is 
at 0 degrees, we're going to do uh, 345 minus 0. And now we have a problem. So now we have an error of 345 degrees, which is greater than half a, half a rotation of the circle. And what this is going to then do is this is going to turn all the way the long way around here. And that is undesirable. What's also going to happen is if we overshoot at all over this target, um, it's and it's 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 or um, if if we overshoot over zero or whatever, it's going to keep rotating and rotating and rotating, and that will probably not be the most desirable behavior. So let's fix this. So um, the way we can fix this in in our code is with a technique called angle wrapper. Um, so let's go ahead and code that up. So public double angle wrap. Um, so this angle wrap method is going to take in a angle and radians. Uh, remember that the gyro returns an angle between negative pi and pi. Um, pi in radians, for those who may not be familiar, is just 180 degrees. Um, so a full circle, a full rotation of 360 degrees in radians is just 2 pi. Um, so we're just doing things in terms of pi. Uh, it's, it's not much different. It's just a little bit easier for things like our trig functions. So basically what we need to do is we need to add or subtract rotations from our angle uh, to get it within that 180 degrees to negative 180 degrees bounds. So we can say while our angle is greater than uh, 180 degrees, math.py, we can say radians plus equals uh, one full rotation, or, or two pi. Uh, and then we can do the same thing for negative angles. So while radians is less than negative math dot pi, uh, we can, oh, excuse me, um, this needs to subtract here. And then this one will add radian plus equals times math dot pi. Wonderful. And then finally, we can return our wonderful radians measurement here. And then, so what this will do is, so if we take 345 degrees, and then, or, yeah, so if we take 345 degrees, which is greater than 180 degrees, and then we subtract 345 minus 360, this will give us negative 15, which, if we look at our wonderful diagram right here, uh, we can... Uh, that means that we will turn negative this way towards 345, and this will get rid of uh, the fact that we, uh, and this will make sure that we are no longer turning the long way around the circle, and we are taking the shortest route to the angle. And that is the desirable behavior. Okay, so what we can do is we can just take this wonderful angle wrap method that we made and plug it in here for our error calculation and now this will work this will guarantee that we will be always turning the shortest distance towards our reference uh, which is wonderful so uh, let's get our robot moving um, so let's calculate our double so let's just say our target angle is uh, Target, or let's say, let, let's be consistent. Let's say reference angle is equal to math dot two radians, uh, ninety degrees. So we want our robot to turn to ninety degrees. Um, uh, the math library has a wonderful two radians method that is uh, very helpful for things like this. And then, so what we can do is we can say our power is equal to PID control of reference angle and IMU dot uh, get uh, orientation dot first angle dot yeah just off first angle um you may have to change this depending on how your ref hub is oriented um there is documentation for this in the bno 055 class if i recall yes there is um <clears throat> perfect so this is the motor power proportional to our to the angle error that we need to turn. 
and then so we can add to the left side so we can set our, our left side of the motor to positive power right here uh, from, uh, whoops back right dot set power power and then we can do oh my gosh excuse me back left dot set power and front right dot set power. and then we can set the right side of the robot to be negative power all right and then so now once you run this on your robot assuming we tune our coefficients from previously uh one thing uh since this is technically position we will unfortunately have to get rid of our feet forward on our reference very sad um but once we tune kp ki and kd you will have fantastic angle control of your robot so yeah uh, as always, if you would like to learn more about this topic or any other control topic in FTC, uh, check out controlallftc.com. Thank you so much.